Hey everybody, how's it? Aloha. Okay, something new, something fresh, something loud. Bodum after midnight. Paint the sky with blood. And so apparently this is uh, fairly brand new according to the release date here on Napalm Records uh, website. Premiered March 30th, 2021. Seems to be blowing up pretty well. I want to thank you guys for the suggestions. Please, I want, I just want to remind you um, though everybody's been really super kind about certain things, I just, when I click on a link that somebody sends me, sometimes I don't know the difference between radio edit, clean version, and stuff like that. Thanks for your patience. You guys are being cool about telling me, but just know, I don't know what's cool, what's not, what's a hit, what, how, how it sometimes is perceived by people, because the last couple of uh, tracks that I just released had a couple of, um, you know, expressions of like, why would I listen to this? This guy is, uh, you know... Is a bad person or, or whatever the case is just know that I'm just clicking links and I'm just doing my thing and uh, you know I appreciate you know the comments and stuff like that but just know I, I, I'm trying to kind of this I'm pressing links man I'm just listening to stuff if you want to support me in the channel you want to buy me a cup of coffee super cool beans I want to thank you guys for the support you know if any ads run it's a copyright claim uh, any links for Bodum After Midnight as far as their Spotify their merch and stuff I like to support the record company the musicians the bands uh, will also be down below in my description. So let's do this. Bodum after midnight. Paint the sky with blood. All right. What great musicianship and composition that's in this track. This is the tough thing about doing a first listen sometimes when there's a lot of things in there happening and I, and I only pick and choose what I can say at a stop because of me being your old decomposer, um, the older I get the better I was. You know, sometimes I, I get so excited about one thing, I don't, I don't hit it uh, in my, my breakdown. What a huge sound. Uh, with when the power of the track comes in is there I, I can't tell if it's an orchestra behind it I, I I'm gonna lean into really super powerful keyboard arrangements um, that are that are supporting a lot of the power and the crunch and that and the cojones of this track um, obviously when they're going into double time you know I'm only gonna and I'm only assuming it's double time it actually could be the structured tempo could be a 200 something but um, or 190-ish in that zone. But that's when I hear this just overwhelming amount of power and composition and arrangement behind it. Then there are some of those turnarounds that are happening in the phrases. Uh, you may, some theory guys might consider that the cadence, which would be the, the you telegraphing the fact that a turn is coming with those notes. Do -da -do -do -da -do -do -da -do -da -da kind of reminded me a little bit of, um, uh, and I say this with respect, uh, kind of a dream theater kind of power riff, you know, but if obviously this is a different kind of um, uh, Genre where it's a little more beefed up and heavier in the metal uh, in the performance of it. That is absolutely mental um, I'm gonna say a little bit more about the vocals and stuff But I just wanted to bring that up that that was extremely powerful those arrangements that are happening behind the guitars And then I'll talk a little bit about the riffiness and all the stuff that I'm hearing in the next stop So let's go back a little bit and Close 
Okay, I'm going to stop there. I know something big is probably going to happen there. Uh, so now I'm going to rinse on the riff of this stuff. Uh, the riff on this is, is really super powerful, but I, I want to get into, I mean, the unison playing of the guitar player and, or the guitar players and the drum. And there is, it seems like the riff is followed by a keyboard arrangement, but it's tucked deeper in the back. Now, I could be completely wrong. I usually, in most cases, am. I'm okay with it. That's why I count on you to guys who are the, the fans, the guys and the gals, uh, to maybe fill me in on a little of the production and the actual composition of it. Um, these chunks of, of compositions, I mean, are, are so well um, arranged. They keep on delivering this different salvo, if you would, of power. You know, it's kind of like downshifting. If you're like, if you're like fully speeding, if like you're a race car driver or a formula driver or something, well, I don't know if they shift or if they paddle or whatever the case is. But it's almost like, whoa! You know, that kind of a vibe and stuff. And um, it fits so well in the structure of the song. It's not like it's forced. Sometimes I've heard you know, some, some tracks here on my journey here on this channel. Sometimes I wonder if it, that's a forced arrangement to change it up just for the sake of changing it up. But the continuity and the consistency of the riff is really crazy. It's not that riff also is not so far out there that it takes you way beyond um, the power of composition for the song as a whole to deliver the song. It's not overdone. Um, you know, sometimes there are riffing, <laughs> excuse me, <coughs> I swallow my spit the wrong way. Um, that's what happens when you get old. Um, where the riff becomes more of the power play of the track than the actual melody and the vocals. This guy's vocals and his performance are absolutely mental. So I'm really smoking on that stuff. But I just wanted to dive in there, that unison, that power playing. And also, I love where the bass is positioned in this. A lot of times, you know, I've, I've kind of pined for, you know, oh, I wish the bass was just a little hotter. But I love where the bass is, and I love his playing and the sound of that bass is also pretty sick. All right, here we go. What great composition and counter harmonics on these guitars. Um, so I, I'm not familiar with the band and I'm trying not to watch the music video, uh, but um, it seems like there are two guitar players there and the tones in which they use, if that's the case, and if it's not, this is genius on, on the production and the engineering and the musicianship of this, is that it sounds like a lot of the parts are doubled and because of the different tones of the guitar and the doubling, they're not identical tones, really add some real powerful depth and separation, which I think is really important in this track because of the fact that if that is a synth with a very heavy distorted keyboard kind of vibe to it, you know, there's, there's battles for tones in there. And at no time in the mix at this, at anywhere in this has that come across as a conflict that you'd have to power um, battle in levels. What I mean by that is, it's always about the guitar, it's always about the power of the guitar, but yet, in, in, a, in a not so subtle way, that keyboard line that follows the riff is just behind it. But kind of like I said, there's a little bit of a battle of tone there, so the way they've cut through that is by the unique tones of each one of the guitars. Uh, at the beginning, when I kicked back into this, I loved the use of the delay. It sounded like 
uh, that in that next rift that came into that other uh, section, uh, there was a delay that actually bounced off what may have just been eighth notes to 200 beats per minute, if that's the case. And it kind of ponged off of each other, but they did it in a mono way. It wasn't like a pong where it went split, 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 split. They kept it that way. And I really dug that. I like that because there's enough ambiance happening, uh, happening already with the way the uh, drums are, have been engineered. And that drummer, <laughs> guys, that guy's holding down pipe for sure. Um, and then the solo. Here's something else uh, that I love about the solo. And once again, if it's two guitar players, if they're switching off solos and stuff, uh, I love the tasteful, tasteful dynamics in guitar playing. A lot of times when we get, at least for myself and the experience here with a lot of this advanced prog metal, math rock, or new metal, I'm sorry, all the subgenres, I get a little mixed up, is that we, you know, you guys, uh, these musicians can go as fast as they want now. It's no, it's no longer, the fireworks of speed and shred are no longer as glam as it was when it was first being laid on. I think with all these great guitar players that are now in bands, or have been for many, many years, wonderful great guitar players, have now in, uh, uh, really dove into the fact that they, okay, I can go ahead and do all this, but what really sings out really large are the dynamics. Pinch harmonics, swelling into it, bending into a solo and stuff like that, and all of those heavies and dives and stuff like that. And then shining and go ahead and just kicking in a quick, you know, bunch of fireworks by whether you're sweeping or you're tapping and just moving around and getting around in your phrasing, but getting back into the meat of the solo. A lot of times are notes that are being hung out or, or you know the, you know the the effects dynamics that guitar players can do with what I said before, pinch harmonics and stuff like that. Anyhow, yada yada. I loved how they dropped that halftime in there. That was really super cool. <coughs> that um, when it, that was just kind of like a let you know, kind of pull back, kind of you know, put on the brakes a little bit, and they just went oh, like you're going really hot into a corner. It's like put the brakes on and then ah, go ahead and finish at the end with that. Um, this was a really cool, <laughs> cool reaction for me. I found myself getting pretty uh, into it. Remember, my reactions are not theoretical based; they're just based on orchestral listening, just taking uh, my song. My latest thing is that I say I'm, I'm, I do dissections. Uh, and these dissections are like peeling back these great layers because, you know, at the end of the day, you as the pure listener enjoying to a piece of music, even if you're an advanced pure listener and you're really getting on to the depths and the techniques of the musicians, there's so much work that goes into a production like this that, you know, at the end of the day, you know, uh, if you're looking at a painting, the painter isn't saying, hey, check out the brush strokes. You know, the audience at large is going to step back and look at this painting and just, you know, collectively see it one body of work. Same thing sonically, but there is a, 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 a shit ton, shall I say, of uh, uh, work that goes into a project or, or a song like this. That's a lot of work. That's a lot of carving out uh, uh, composition, arrangement, productions, musicianship and stuff and making it happen. And, um, and I appreciate that. And I know a lot of you who are big fans of, of uh, Bodum After Midnight, as well as some of the other um, tracks that I review here are really beginning to rinse and understand like, wow, that's a lot of work going in there. If you're that person that likes to just go, well, you know, Jeebs, you could be demystifying a little too much. I understand. I try to keep that balance and stuff. But uh, at the end of the day, I believe if you're, you know, a subscriber here, you're just getting on that ride with me to just go, whoa, did you hear that? Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Anyhow, uh, thank you so much for requesting this song. If you have any uh, other songs from this band you'd like for me to check out, please leave it in the comments. I'll try to get back to it as fast as possible. Once again, thank you very much for the support. Uh, if you see fit, buy me a cup of coffee. Super cool beans. The link for the coffee, link for the headsets, the link for their music is going to be right below. All right, guys, take care of yourself. This is it for me for the day. Aloha. Ah All right.